Hi guys, can you all hear Pramod sir? Guys. Okay, good afternoon students. Welcome to the session wherein we have Mr. Pramod Verma, who is the restaurant manager of the world. Hi, the world is a cruise ship uh, which is a specialized cruise ship. Um, Yogesh sir will quickly give you a brief of what the world is. And uh, then we have a couple of, uh, then we, I will introduce you to uh, Mr. Pramod, Mr. Pramod Verma. Yogesh sir, just a quick word on the world. Yeah, guys, quickly about the world, as I rightly told, I have worked 18 years on the cruise, but the world is completely different from any other cruise liner in the world, guys. Because the specialty about this is, it has got apartments in it, not cabins, how we have usually for customers, okay? And these are not for ordinary, I would mean, say ordinary in the sense they are for billionaires. Or you can say those who are really uh, into business tycoons and all. So they are the ones who own this particular, uh, the world. And today, uh, Mr. Pramod Varma is going to give you in detail, okay, about this cruise life, about this world. And to be a part of this, guys, is not that easy also as you think. Okay, as you get easily on any other cruise liner, it's not that easy to be a part of the world. So, Mr. Pramod, today we'll go in detail with that with all of you all. You can ask at the end of the session as much as questions you want. We'll have a QA, a a question and answer session. So, at the end, you can ask whatever you want. So, you can go ahead now. Yeah. Okay, uh, thanks. Okay. okay, all right. Pramodji, good. good afternoon. Thanks for joining to the session. Uh, we have uh, our students here and they'll be joining more. Uh, hmm. We wish to know about your journey so far, sir. So how has been your you know, experience and how you ended working on a cruise ship and what do you wish to guide the, the students? Yep. And then uh, looking forward to today's session, sir. Yep. First of all, uh, uh, good afternoon, everybody. And I would like to thank uh, Rajesh, sir, and Yogesh, sir. I'm not able to hear you. Uh, your video is off. Uh... Can you hear me? Hello? Yes, sir. Can you hear me now? Rajesh? I can hear you. Yeah. Can, can I? Okay, can I go ahead now? Okay, thank you. All right, uh, good afternoon, everybody. I would like to say, first of all, thank you very much to Rajesh sir and Yogesh sir for giving me an opportunity to speak for with the RAPS Metro Institute of uh, Hospitality. Uh, as they mentioned where I work, I work with the, you can see on your screen, uh, the, the ship. You can see the ship on the screen. So I work there. This is a, this is a, a small ship. It's a medium sized ship with the. Yeah, it is a Hello. Yogesh, can I continue? Yeah. Okay. So you can see that there's a 165 apartments on board. You can see the ship, how it looks like. It's a very beautiful ship. It's a very, it's a, it's a medium sized ship. Um, as you can see, it's very different from uh, cruise ships. What cruise ships have is cruise ships have passengers and guests which are coming uh, according to the itinerary. They come every week, they go every week, they go back to their homes, they enjoy themselves and they finish the cruise. No. Here, the difference is that the people who stay on board are the owners or as we call them, residents of the apartment. So they own, own their uh, apartments on board. That means it's their home. So they live in their home and we give them all the facilities, what they need. This is a um, very niche product in the market. This is only one kind of a ship in the world. There's no other ship like this uh, hasn't come yet into the market. Uh, there was a couple of uh, tries which were done, but it, it, they were not successful. There's one more, there was one more ship which is coming now, which has been supposed to come in 2024-25. They're, they're still planning it. We don't know how it's going to succeed, but it's a very difficult market to cater to. Uh, it's easy to make the ship, but remember, it's very difficult to sell the ship. So to sell apartments to millionaires and billionaires, it needs a lot of, uh, need a lot of base, a lot of strong marketing, a lot of finance lot of investment. So that's why this product came out and it was a successful. But remember, to be a successful, you have to see a failure. So this company initially, when it was launched in 2001, it was a failure. For two years, they could not sell the apartments on board. So, so the bank has to take the ship back. So it was, it was doomsday for this company. They could not succeed. 
so when the they took the the bank took the ship uh, the so called owners which were owners which were on or there were 65 owners at that time and there was 100 apartments empty so ship was running into a big loss so the all the 65 owners what they did they they pulled the money in and they bought the ship back from the bank and they made their own company that's why the company called residency uh, came into existence when the owners bought the company they had their own marketing team they had their own advisors they had their own finance team and in one year time they could sell all the apartments back and the ship started to run successfully that was 2004 2004 now it's 2020 ship is absolutely full all the apartments have been sold and there's a big waiting list for people to buy in so now the ship is there uh, what kind of clientele will deal with so you can imagine if somebody is buying a home at sea or on the sea or on the ship has to be really rich so what we have is we have a, if you see the the bottom of the ship you can see near to the lifeboats there are smaller apartments and if you see the on top there are bigger apartments so the smaller apartments are we call them studio apartments they cost around about 6 million dollar each and the biggest apartments are around about 20 22 18 19 depending upon the owners but you have to pay a million dollar maintenance fee as well to keep the ship running to pay the salaries to run the engines to cost the cover of the ports and other taxes as well so right now we have um, we are we are dealing with um, very 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 elite client of the world we have got successful businessmen businesswomen entrepreneurs owners and you can you can say that money is money is not the issue they can buy whatever they want most of them most of them don't fly they try fly by their own private jets or their own charters and they just come to join the ship wherever the ship is we always the ship keeps on moving around around the year we go to different ports like like the cruise ship and we stay there for a long while we don't stay like cruise ship comes in the morning at 9 am leaves at 6 pm we don't do like that we stay for a couple of days because our our guests are don't want to they are not cruise ship guests so they want to see different part the wineries the art collection the theater the operas business meetings and everything else and so that's why um uh we stay a lot longer in the port than other cruise ships so that was my brief intro introduction um uh it was a bit long but i, I think i need just a little bit more time to explain what what we do here on the world okay Yogesh, yeah. So I've done the introduction part. Um, I will. Um, Yogesh, you wanted me to go ahead with the other part as well. Um, other things. Okay. Good. So now what we're going to do is we're going to learn about uh, um, the cruise ship operation, which happens on the ships. So I'm going to share my PowerPoint to you. Okay. All right. So, can you please see the screen, uh, Yogesh? Can you see the screen? Yeah, all good. So, uh, boys and girls, uh, you can see what is a cruise ship. So, everybody, everybody knows. As you know, we have uh, uh, Yogesh and Rajesh, both which have come from the cruise industry. So, they know a lot about um, what the cruise ships are. So, I'm just going to go briefly to tell you what the cruise ships are. Uh, cruise ships are basically floating hotels um, where people come to enjoy themselves. Uh, cruise ships goes around from port to port uh, on a daily or uh, twice a day basis or a weekly basis. Um, uh, people get off in the get people get off from the cruise ship. They get get off in the morning and they come back in the evening or they come back in the afternoon. The cruise ship uh, does a lot of tours and um, uh, what do you call it? Travel plans for them. They can go to different places, see what's going on. and they come back to the ship back again in the evening they enjoy themselves and go back to bed and then we are in the next port next day or day after so that's what a cruise does the cruise is basically a floating hotel um the, the, the question is the question is why the why the cruise industry is such a big industry uh the, the cruise industry is such a big industry because uh of a lot of reasons why it became so popular why it took a uh, took a lot of load away from the hotels and it became 
for every uh, people, every everybody uh, from all around the world, and it's to take a cruise and become very affordable. So the cruise packet you can see is generally what they know is because it costs all the it covers all the cost of the whole trip. So what happens is you don't have to pay anything ex extra, uh, like like uh, no other taxes, no hidden charges. Uh, a lot of a lot. Of, uh, there's a lot of sound coming, Yogesh. You, you are muted. A70. Who is the Galaxy A70? And Manali Bhagat, please could you mute yourself? Galaxy A70 and Manali Bhagat. Yeah. Galaxy A70, please mute yourself. Yeah, 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 Professor. You go ahead. Okay, so the best part is when people cruise, uh, they have the all the, the all the packages what the company sells is all inclusive. That means whenever they come on board, uh, they can enjoy without paying anything extra, except uh, a few things which are come going to come down to. They don't have any other hidden taxes. They don't have to pay anybody. They don't have to pay uh, a cab fare. They don't have to pay anything. The the everything is in a package, so they just come. They come on board and they start their vacation. Uh, it's uh, the, the cruise destinations are very exciting. Uh, see what happens is when you come to a hotel. Let's say we, let's let's take an example. If you want to go to um, Barcelona, let's say a very famous port. So you have to go to a hotel. You check in in the hotel. Then you get up in the morning. You have your breakfast. Then you organize yourself a car or a bus or a taxi to go and see the uh, see the the city. And you have to do a lot of lot of hassles are going on. But what cruise company does it? It does everything for you. You don't have to do anything. You just have to tell them that you want to go and see Barcelona. You go to the to the tour desk. You book yourself. Everything is charged to your account. You don't have to pay anything there. There's a ticket which is sent to your part to the to your cabin. You pick up the ticket. You show your time. You get up in the morning. You have your breakfast. You go to the bus. They take you a tour, and they will safely bring it back to the ship. That's that's responsibility of the ship. So there's a lot of less hassle. They don't have to do anything. It's very easy, and it's very comforting as well that you've been. Um, it's very assuring. So what happens is it's the other thing is the cruise is very affordable. Right now, uh, all around the world, there's a lot of segments of cruising. There's a lot of company who caters to different market segments according to the price and uh, the lifestyle of the people. So the cruise has become very affordable for everyone. So you don't have to be. Uh, very rich to go on a cruise anymore. You can always find a company which suits your requirements. Um, there are cruises from, I'll give you an example, from $300 to $400 per person for one week, from then to $20,000, $30,000 per person. So that's very affordable. Plus, other thing is, uh, it's very stress-free. So because when you come to the ship, you're welcomed by the crew, you have your cabin, you have your bed, you have everything is there for you, you don't have to uh, ask anything from everyone. Everything is ready for you. There's no hazards. You don't have to call anyone. There's no hotel check-ins. Oh my God, what's happening? My room is going to be ready or not? Uh, do I get a nice room? Is the room is going to be uh, in the right location and everything? It's cruise ship is absolutely ready. Everything is spot on. Uh, what happens is it's it's a different vacation. So what happens is when you cruise, let's say we have a one week cruise. So we will do is. We we'll stay on a couple of ports. Then what we have is a sea day in between. The sea day gives you opportunity to see the ship itself. And then you can be relaxed. You don't have to get up in the morning and run for your two. So you can get up whatever time you want. You can get up at 10, 30, 11 o'clock, 12 o'clock. You don't have to worry about your breakfast. Breakfast is available everywhere. Food is available everywhere. Tea, coffee, everything is there. You don't have to worry. Oh my God, in a hotel, the breakfast is only open until 10 o'clock. After 12 o'clock, I'm not gonna get my breakfast. This doesn't happen on a cruise ship. Cruise ship, you can order breakfast anytime you want. Uh, there's always some breakfast available somewhere uh, until 12 o'clock in the morning. Plus, uh, it's, it's a new experience. You meet a lot of new people on the cruise. Um, it's very exciting. You can relax on the sun. It's a, a beautiful ocean going past. It's an experience. If people love it. I mean, I'm telling you, people love it. I love it myself. When, the, when we are sailing in ocean, the, the sea is beautiful, the sun is shining. It's an awesome picture to see. It relaxes you a lot. You know, it's, it's, it's very enjoyable. People relax, they have their drinks, they chat to other people. It's very, very comforting. Also, the ship has a lot of, ship have probably right now, all the big ships coming in with the 6,000 people capacity. You have 
everything inside the ship. You have gyms, you have sauna, you have spas, you have jogging activities, you have mountain climbing, you have water slides, you have, you name it, you have it. You have uh, a Starbucks on the ship right now. You have, uh, uh, what do you call, uh, pizza, pizza houses, burger joints, a lot of activities, movie theaters, uh, recreational lectures. I mean, you name it, you have it. So people don't get bored at all. And it's on one price. Remember, you don't have to pay anything extra for anything. Everything is included except your alcohol and your trip and your travel and your shopping, which you want to buy from duty free shops. All the lectures, all the movies is everything is free. You have to pay for spa, of course. But what happens is exactly when you join the ship, the cruise companies give you credits. Every cruise company will give you, let's say, please, when you're coming on board, they will give you, let's say, a $500 credit, which you can use in spa. That means company is giving you money to spend in the company. So people use the credits and they, they enjoy their spa and they take another, another benefits out of it out of it as well. You can do swimming. There's a lot, lot of yoga cruises. There's fitness cruises. There's uh, uh, healthy cruises. There's spa cruises. There's a lot of different varieties of cruises right now. So people go according to their, um, their choices. So it's very easy, very convenient. You don't have to pay anywhere. You save a lot of money. You just have to pay for your alcohol, which is, which is also easier because if, if you want to drink, if you are a regular drinker and you want to enjoy a good wine and a good drink, you don't have to pay all the time. What you can do is you can buy a package. There are a lot of packages available on the ship. So if you pay, let's say, if you are um, a, a, a Coke drinker, let's take an example, if you drink Coke all the time, so every time you have to buy a Coke, but what you can do is you can buy a package, which will be a sticker on your card, on your key card. The moment you see it, they will show the key card to the bar waiter. They will bring you the Coke to you. You don't have to pay anything. You already paid for everything. So, so all the time in the cruise, you can drink as much Coke as you want. There's no issue with that. So that's also, it's also a money saving um, activity, but it's always convenient for the people. Okay. And uh, the cruise, the cruise also, it, it's also uh, makes them to allow to speak to a lot of new people. And there's a lot of new friends. There a lot of, it becomes a big community. There's a, there's a, I can tell you that there's a lot of good cruise companies have such a big cruise network of clientele that they only go to that company. They never go anywhere else. So it's for easy, it's, it's easy for them to sell their sell their product because they are very true travelers. They're like um, what do you call? They're very faithful to the company. They're very loyal to the company. They never go anywhere, and a company takes advantage of them and make sure they build their network. Because remember, one person brings another person as well on board. So there's a lot of uh, uh, networking going on as well. Uh, also, of course, uh, very, very popular is for the cruise ships is honeymoon, anniversaries, birthdays, uh, proposals. Right now, we have a lot of uh, companies allowing marriages to happen on board. My company, my ex company, Cunard, when I used to work for, they, you can have your marriage on board. So that's another revenue earning for company as well. It's cheaper than outside. It's a lot cheaper than uh, cheaper from land. And uh, you can get married on board. It's a very fantastic venue. Uh, Marriages normally happens on sea days with sunsets and photographs and everything. The company provides all the cameramen and the photographer that includes in the package. You don't have to do anything extra and you can have a ball of a time. Anniversaries, birthdays, social parties, get together. A lot of people stay in different parts of the world. So the families meet, especially during Christmas or, or summer vacations or spring vacations, as they say in America or in England. Um, and so they, there's a chance for them to meet. So the, the families, they regularly cruise every Christmas time. You will see a lot of same families coming and meeting each other. So it's very easy to cruise. That's why the cruising is very popular. Uh, right now we have around about 300 plus ships. If I'm not correct, what's the number is, but I think around about 350, 350 cruise ships sailing around the world. That's a lot of cruise ships. And plus every year you have 20 ships joining the fleet of a various companies. So the industry is booming. It's almost like $600 billion industry, uh, which has big revenue system. So it's a very, very big, huge part of the global economy uh, in tourism sector, plus other countries as well. Because remember, cruising, if you, have, if you are living in Caribbean islands or in Hawaii or somewhere small, Samoa, Pacific Islands, uh, Dominican Republic, Cuba, uh, Jamaica, uh, St. Martin, St. Thomas, cruising is the only profession they have. That's what they make their money from. If the cruise ship zone goes to country, they don't go to those countries, their revenue is zero because that's what they make the money from, from uh, guests, from uh, taxes, from port charges, 
all these facilities which they give to the to the cruise companies that's where they make the revenue from i'm sure right now when the cruise companies are closed right now these countries are the, the are the one who are suffering most because there's no revenue anymore there's no customer shops are closed there's no crew uh, as well so that was a, a, a brief introduction about uh, as i say cruise ship so um, if if we have finished the cruise ship if you guys have understand the cruise ship now what we're going to do is we're going to go to how to uh, what what we should do or what are the opportunities we have it on board there are a lot of opportunities on board uh, as as now we're going to take uh, just the basic three the big three as we call it but just to give you a brief idea it's just not that uh, there are only opportunities in restaurants and galley and the bars there's a lot of opportunities you can join them as a, a spa staff if you have any friends who are doing this spa they are massage therapist hair size hair stylist or um, you know uh, makeup makeup artist or something which which they want to go to cruise ship they hire all those things as well then you can join as a shop staff if your friends are working with somewhere in retail uh, if they are, have a good knowledge about jewelry and watch that's the most exciting places in the shop but also you can have a general retail as well you can join them as well then you have photography you can join them as a photographer if you have any friends or colleagues or family members uh, who want to join as a photographers have a very professional experience you can apply there are a lot of agencies in india who take them as well you can join them as security staff if uh, um, they can join as uh, security guards or security officer probably if you are in police or uh, armed forces you are retired and looking for a job you can join the cruise ships uh, there's a there's a there's always a lot of opportunities coming up for uh, for security staff as well then you have doctors then you have nurses then you have uh, uh, as we call it entertainment staff like actors magicians uh, what else we have uh, light directors all these things uh, which are part to commercial making and ad making if somebody is working there they can also apply on that one plus also we have of course deck and engine you can join technical staff and also the deck officers uh, deck engineers electrical officers Uh, so that's the whole uh, area where we the, the staff can also join also there's a housekeeping which i have not done this one uh, you can join if your friends are housekeeping uh, laundry men uh, bedroom stewards there's a lot of opportunities uh, right now especially for girls i can all, i can emphasize on that housekeeping is where department where the girls uh, are probably more in number than other departments uh, so if if somebody wants to join in housekeeping as a bedroom steward there's a lot of opportunities there and the girls would be preferred i'm not saying you can get through without an interview but the the, the preference is for women uh, more than men but boys can also join anyway that's not a issue as well so what we're going to do is we're going to take care of uh, three departments as you can see it on the slide this first is galley departments so or the kitchen galley is a word for for the kitchen on the ships so you can join there as cooks as Uh, beginning from a lot of people join as galley utilities and then they become cooks and a lot of people start as cooks um, if you have a good education and uh, and a good experience you can always start from cooks then the second uh, biggest would be the fnb which is restaurants and bar restaurant is a very very big department um, probably most of the ship right now on the big ship there are like 11 and 12 13 14 15 restaurants and there's a lot of staff which are needed so you can always start you can see all the position which i have mentioned fnb manager maitre d head waiters but always you're going to start from uh, probably comi a um, lot of company use different uh, names for them some people call them uh, we call them comis in my company uh, you start as comi the rank which is like a buffet steward or a snack steward or bus boy whatever they call it in different companies that's where you're going to start from and then you can go up hierarchy with assistant waiter waiter head waiter assistant maitre the maitre the and fnb manager um, then there's bars bars is a it's a very good department to work for Uh, i will always say that the bars uh right now also have a, a higher percentage of girls than the boys there's a lot of boys there as well but companies do prefer that they have a female staff in bar department because it's not very uh, what do you call it um, uh heavy work there like the restaurant is a very very it's got a lot of load and a lot of heavy carrying uh, with trays but bar is not that hard uh so you can join us a uh, Uh, a bar waiter assistant bar waiter or a bar utility and then you can go up from bar as well there's another side to the bar as well if you if you are very good and interested in wines and you want to become you want to work as a wine waiter or a sommelier 
there's a lot of opportunities there a lot of indians have a lot of my friends have gone from restaurant to the bar and they became sommelier and then a couple of them become chief sommelier so that's a big position in the ship as well so that's also another one you can try so then you can see the hierarchy here i have a chart for you um, always the structure is it's a, it's, a, it's only a one ship structure but the most of the ship structures are more or less same little bit here and there so you can see as i told you you're going to start if you start from your left hand side you can see the buffet runner which is a snack steward or we call it commie the rang or, uh, or or a buffet steward so you start from there you're going to be working in the buffets i'm going to i'm going to explain how the restaurant works a bit little, little later then you're going to go up uh, to the maitre d hotel which is restaurant manager where is where i am right now and i exactly started from position of assistant waiter so you can see how it how you <coughs> how you climb up your hierarchy and you go up to the to to become where you are it's um, it's a very difficult procedure it's a difficult step uh, yogesh has been there and it's not easy but if you are committed and you have the knowledge you can go up wherever you want uh, my my fnb manager is there my fnb manager is also indian he is from vizag he's a great guy i have been working with him 17 years and he also started from the same position as assistant waiter so there is no limit to touch the sky but you have to you have to work very hard Okay, you can see the bar as well. The bar utility, bar waiter, bar waiter, bartender, bar barman, all these places, and then you go up become a bar manager. Same thing in the galley. You're going to start as assistant cook or a galley cook or a crew cook. You might, you might not. It's good. It's up to you how good you are in the interview. Then you start as a third cook for sure. Then you become second cook, first cook, chef the party, demi chef the party, sous chef, and then you become an executive chef. Um, executive chef. I have seen a lot of um, uh, Indians. reaching that positions i got my best friend james uh, who is executive chef with kinad right now he is also indian so it's not that we cannot reach up high but you have to be very smart uh, the other department we can you can see is a provision department or they call it hotel stores on land uh, you might have read it about it so you can always work there as well if you are uh, if you want to work something different you can start assistant storekeeper storekeeper provision master and also guys there's also a position called fnb controller so that's a very good position if you are smart uh you have to work either in the restaurant or in the galley to be to be a part of fnb controller normally they take people from there because they understand what we have to order you just cannot become fnb controller straight away on cruise ships because you have to have a prior managerial experience of a restaurant or a galley so you understand the products very well what you going to order otherwise they will never take you from there all right so seeing the hierarchy so how does it work how does it work so have, you can see that uh sorry uh, you can see there is a um, i've put two pictures of dining rooms over there so how does it work in the in the uh, restaurants i will tell you a little later so you can see the pic the dining room you can see how massive they are if you see if you see if you see the dining rooms they are you can see ground level first level and second level so they are normally three stories um, dining rooms in most of the cruise ships probably which i worked in they were almost at least two levels or three levels right. and they are massive so you dealing with you you're serving around about uh, my ship was 2000 passengers i can say we were serving 750 people in one sitting there's two sittings which we'll going to explain a little bit later um so you're serving 1500 people uh in one evening and some of the dining rooms are around about 2000 people in one shot So you can imagine two thousand people one time. It's a very challenging task. I can tell you that it's a very challenging task. If you are not switched on and if you are not smart, you're never going to make it. So all the waiters and if if uh, if all the all the all the students who are listening and you want to work in the restaurants and you want to become waiters, remember uh, you have you have cruise you, work or uh, rooms no such thing. Actually, hotels are there. Sorry, I couldn't hear. Pushpa, Sorry, couldn't hear. Push. So, what what are you asking? No, you can carry on from the uh, Okay, no worries. We'll do the question and answer in the end. We'll answer all the questions. Don't worry about it. Um. Uh. So. Um. Yeah. So you have to be very fast when you work in the restaurants. Um. You have to be very very fast, very quick, and very switched on. So that's my my small uh, advice to all of you is. 
the cruise, how does it work is your breakfast, dinner and lunch, all the food on the cruise ship is included in your ticket. That, that's what you pay in your fare. So you don't have to pay for anything of the, for the food. You can eat anywhere on the ship, which I will come to a little bit, uh, except the specialty restaurants. So specialty restaurants is where you have to pay. And most of the cruise ships um, have specialty restaurants. Uh, there are a lot of specialty chefs, which have been linked to the, linked to the, to the, to the companies. Uh, like uh, Yogesh works for PNO, and PNO has uh, Atul Kocher with them, and I think it's uh, Marco Pierre White, if I'm correct. Marco yes. Pierre White, Marco yes. Pierre, yeah, Marco Pierre White and Atul Kocher. They're two uh, celebrity chefs with, which are joined with PNO. And with Cunard, we have a chef which has joined what we had was Todd English. Todd English is an American chef. So we have, what happens is every company is linked to a celebrity chef, some kind of Michelin star. And they open their restaurants on the, on the ships. Uh, also, it also promotes their uh, brand as well. But ship also have a very unique uh, uh, restaurants on board besides the regular dining room. So you have to pay for your specialty restaurant differently whatever the charges are, but dining room, the main dining room is, um, is main dining room and the buffets and other parts where you can eat is pizzeria and pool grill and everything else, all the Lido and whatever wind jammer. They have a lot of various names. Everything is free. You can eat as much as you want, you want to eat and you can eat anytime. It's open 24 hours. There's some part of the buffet. There's always, as we say in cruise ship, there's always food available at any given point of time. You don't have to pay anything for it. So people can eat pizza as much as you want. You can have hot dog, burgers, chips, salads, sandwiches, whatever you want to eat. Um, so there's always food available. So you don't have to pay for it. And uh, the main dining room is uh, the main dining room. They have different names for it. Uh, have two seatings. Uh, I can try to understand you. Please try to grasp it. It's a very different system from land. So what happens is you have two sitting. One sitting is... Um, uh, at around about 6.15 or 6.30 and the second sitting is 8.30. So you come to dining room to eat. Either you want to eat early or you want to eat late. So that's, you have to put in your tickets and according to that one, you're, you're given the assignment to eat whatever time you want to eat and what table you will be sitting. That's all Methodist job and, and uh, assistant Methodist job. That they take care of it. I'll, remember, alcohol and drinks would be charged to you, to your account. But if it's good for you, if you can take packages, and that will ease up your life as well. So what we're gonna do is, um, we're gonna go about very quickly. Um, Yogesh, please uh, see how much time you need to have for a break because I don't have a timer with me or I have not seen any watches. Uh, yeah, if you want, you can give a 10 minutes break to them and then you can resume back, that's absolutely fine. So, I mean, when you want to have a break, please let me know, I don't mind because uh, still it's still okay. So the choice is yours, Pramod. You can take whenever. You can take the call whenever you want. Absolutely fine with me. Okay. So, uh, have you finished a half an hour already, or I, I don't know what time it is it's now. It's one ten now. It's one ten. Okay. So, let me speak. Uh, we started at twelve thirty, right? Yes. So, uh, I think we should take one a, a few minutes break, and then we can start again. What do you think? Yes, absolutely fine. So, it's how many ten minutes? Yeah, 10 minutes is fine. Thank you. So guys, that. we'll be back at 1.20. It's 1.10 right now. So 1.20 is what we'll be back. Okay. Just take a 10 minutes break.
Baza mi kaysi ya?
Hello, Promoso. Can you hear me? Yes, uh, Yogesh. Nice and yeah, clear. we can now start. It's 120. 120. Okay. Good. Thank you very much. Welcome. Okay. okay, guys. Welcome back. Um, we're going to go quickly to, through this couple of points and then probably we'll go is with question and answer, which will clear up all your doubts, which is very important for me. Okay, the first department, what we're going to take is galley or the kitchen, as we say. I told you how you're going to start is from the galley. Uh, food is, of course, uh, the most important aspect of any hotel or hospitality organization. So the, 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 the food is prepared, as you can see, is, is a lot of food around the ship. There's no doubt about that. Uh, there's a lot of various restaurants around the ship. There are a lot of various galleys around the ship. It works non-stop. 24 hour system, 24 hour system, which works uh, all the night and day, the bakers, the patissiers, um, the main galley, the hot galley, the, the cold larder, everything works um, in a very well coordinated manner. Uh, of course, there's main galley, which serves breakfast, lunch, and dinner. As I told you, you've seen the big restaurants there, big dining room as a main dining room, you said it. Uh, then always there's a specialized uh, galleys for other dining rooms and it's always pizzerias and uh, crew galley and restaurant galleys as well. So that's the basic structure you should know. Uh, in in a hotel, what happens is um, you have preparation going on in one galley. It doesn't happen like that in, in the cruise ships. There's a different preparation areas for different galleys. So like there's a, a veg prep area. That means there's only the, these chefs or the cooks would be only cutting vegetables. That's it. They will not do anything else. And then you'll be, there'll be a, there'll be a sauce, saucier. Then there will be a roast. Then there will be a fish cook. So it's not like you're going to do everything. There will be a certain area designated to you and you're only going to do that. That's it. You only make sauces. You're only going to make um, uh, fish. You can only make the roast for the day. You can only cut the, the make the vegetables of the day or you're going to make the special of the day. That's how the galley works in the cruise ship. It's not like a normal galley in the hotel. So there's specialization everywhere. Sometimes you will be in a cold ladder where you're going to prepare salads and cold cuts and everything else. You might be on a canapes. You will be only doing canapes. That's it. You're gonna. That's your job. You have a canopy order. You start making it. And uh, of course, if you are in specialized uh, restaurants like Asian or sushi bar, or uh, in a grill restaurant, or in a seafood restaurant, you're gonna be doing that part as well. So that's a different uh, uh, ball game altogether. So it's a, it's a very uh, nice area to work, the galley department. Uh, but it's a, it's one of the toughest one. I I can say there's a lot of learning. There's a lot of knowledge you need. Um, you need to remember in cruise ship, there's no, there's no one who's going to teach you. Nobody will come and teach you. You have to learn yourself. There's no, no teacher over there. And like in India, at least people, most of the people, some of the people will teach you, but in cruise ship, it doesn't happen. It's very, very rare. You have to take initiative and learn. And that's how you, that's how you have to go about it. Nobody's going to come and teach you. Nobody's going to show you the way you are by just by yourself. So you have to show the initiative. Uh, Okay, next department is we're going to take his restaurant. Uh, restaurant department is, of course, uh, run by food and beverage manager, who is going to be the boss. And then you're going to be working in different outlets. Most probably, if you start working in any of the cruise ships, you're going to start as uh, a buffet steward or a snack steward or a bus boy, or as we say, call me the rank. You're going to be working in the buffet areas to start with. You're going to be working in massive buffet areas. You're going to be given an assignment. You're going to be doing your shifts. You're going to do the cleaning and you're going to start from there. If you're good enough in the buffet area, you might get a chance to go in the main dining room as an assistant waiter. That would be start of your restaurant career. Uh, there's a lot of, trust me, there's a lot of competition to get into the restaurant. Just for one reason, there's tips over there. The people do anything to get into the restaurants because there's a lot of money involved in it. There's a big salary waiting for you. It, but remember, it's a lot of hard work. Don't think it's gonna be easy. I never say it's going to be easy. There's a lot of money involved, but it's not going to be easy. So remember that. And second, also, as I tell you, you have to learn yourself. You have to show the initiative. Nobody's going to uh, take your finger and show the things around to you. It won't happen. They will only teach you once and then they will leave you. All right. And of course, you're going to be working. Uh, if you are working as beginning your career, you're going to be working in in-room dining as well, which is uh, uh, room service as well. The casual dining restaurants, the buffet restaurants, and then you saw so and so forth, you're going to start your career and move to the dining room and then you start to do a, a supervisor position. The third part is the bar. The bar is, um, is um, one of the revenue earning de uh, departments of the ship. So bar is very, very closely looked upon by the management because that's where the revenue is coming from. 
uh, bar bar manager of course is in charge and underneath is bartenders bar waiters and bar stewards so remember you can always learn uh, and learn about cocktails and drinks and wines you can show can you can show your ability if you have good knowledge and you can always uh, change your department and become a good bartender or bar waiter and then you can so forth uh, promote yourself we're going to start from most probably with a bar waiter position but remember i always emphasize and i always tell all my friends as well that if you want to start a career in bars in india it's very very tough because there's not so many openings for bars from indians if you are a girl you might get a chance but boys very very limited uh, availability because they prefer or most of the cruise lines prefer girls from um, uh, eastern european countries or wherever they come from um, they won't have a feminine figure in the bar that's where they want to have it and uh, uh, they will probably hire from there if there's an opening coming up they will hire from other countries as well there's a lot of bar waiters from uh, filipino philippines and uh, other countries as well but very very few in my career i have not seen many bar girls joining from india that's after i'm talking about the 17 years on board very very few not many uh, a lot of people uh, move out from restaurants to bar uh, to change the department it has happened it happens but to start your career bar would be a difficult option so just just keep in mind i'm not saying it will not happen so it will be very difficult okay so that's uh, that's my uh, presentation um i've done probably try to explain everything in short possible time uh, i would ask yogesh if he if you want me to do something else or rajesh and then i can take question and answer please yogesh hello can you guys hear me aho ata se bolna tha ke prashn hai rasta kuch chukla maza o maaf kar dena mana chukla maza yogesh uh, i've done the i've done the the presentation so if, if, we, if we are ready with question and answers we can start from there one by one Yogesh, we can't hear you. So uh, can you hear me now? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's fine. Perfect. So, guys, we had a wonderful presentation. by pramod sir as rightly said uh, he said in the beginning one very important thing the guys uh, the billionaires or the businessmen who own this apartment they also have to pay a maintenance for this guys this does not happen on a normal cruise normal cruise the people come and go but on this they pay the maintenance as well so imagine the clientele guys what their profile must be and how privileged or how prestigious it is to work on such a cruise liner okay because you will be having high top end people around the world you must have just heard the name aapne se unka naam suna hoga par aaj aapko dekhne mil raha hai unko serve karne mil raha hai to kisi ko bhi kuch sawal puchna hai uh pramod sir my, my personal question is that uh how many people get selected if there is any vacancy coming up for this cruise liner how do we come to know and how tough it is to get it done how many how many interviews are taken for this Uh, are you talking about the world or the other cruise line? The world, the world. If, if suppose there's a vacancy coming, how do we come to know about the vacancy? Okay, uh, guys, we don't we don't advertise on the we don't advertise on the on the on the websites. Yes, okay. we do advertise on LinkedIn uh, because our company is very very uh, very very special. It's very very unique organization. So we don't need we only take people through references. Okay, that's our first priority, and we always take people from good companies. 
So for example, if you're working in a Regent or um, uh, Silver Seas or somebody like that, we will, we will, we will take your um, uh, resume. It's not that we will not take other, other resumes as well, but we will take your resume. Uh, we will also, we'll go through your resume uh, very thoroughly. It will be done by at least a uh, couple of people. First, it will be a head office in, in the United States, in Florida. They will check your resume. Then that HR coordinator or HR manager will send that resume to the concern department. For example, if you're applying for, let's say you want to apply for Call Me The Rang, as we say, Buffy Stewart. So that, that appraisal will come to, uh, that resume will come to F&B manager. And F&B manager will go with his restaurant manager that will, he will call me and he will call his uh, assistant F&B manager or senior restaurant manager. Look at this guy, what do you think about it? And then we'll give our opinion. Guys, remember, the cruise world is so small round that everybody knows everyone. All the managers, all the management, they know each other in all the companies. So it's not difficult to find what you have done and why you're leaving the organization. A good employee will always leave the organization in a good way. He will never close his doors. So we'll come to know that one. Remember that one. Never leave, never leave, never leave a closed door behind you. Always leave the company in a good heart. So if something happens, you can go back and join them. So that's the first ring thing to remember when you work in the cruise industry. They always know what's going to happen. Your, your qualifications will always figure out how good you are. Um, always remember that one. And do uh, you have to go for at least three to four interviews in my company? We go, it's a very strict procedure, guys. When I was selected, my first interview was one hour. My second interview was one and a half. And my final interview with the vice president of the operations was two hours. Being, uh, being on a senior level position, trust me, they ask me each and everything. They ask me about what kind of, tell me five types of tuna. That's not a management question. That's a, a waiter's question. But they were asking these questions. Do you have knowledge or not? So that kind of level we hire. Because remember, guys, we are a very unique company. We, we are a very unique operation. We don't, we don't have time to train people. So you, the basic knowledge has to be there. Yes, we can tell you the operation of, of my ship which is totally different from the cruise ship, but you have to adjust yourself. It's a very difficult job. Uh, but of course, with the, with the difficulty and the quality of the organization we have, you get paid very well. I can just give an example is where other companies, if you start as a, a Buffet steward or a Call Me The Rang um, in other companies, let's say Royal Caribbean for that example, you will be starting probably on 1,000, 1,050, 1,100, $1,200. In my company, you're going to start with 1950. That's $2,000 for a commie. That's a lot of money at that position. Uh, plus your bonuses and plus your appraisal bonuses. There's a lot of money involved in it. So you might get a very good package, but guys, you need to perform. So in, in my company, there's a lot of pressure. We are not dealing with ordinary people. They are my clientele or my, my residents are very, very um, influential. They're well successful. They are successful businessmen, entrepreneurs. They have thousands of employees working for them. So we are their employees, but there's other companies as well. They have a lot of companies everywhere. There are a lot of residents who have companies in India, in, in China, in Philippines, in Indonesia, in Australia, in South Africa. They own a lot of businesses. They are successful. They are linked to very high profile people, including politicians um, and the government officials. So they know what's going to happen. So they're not going to um, take any rubbish from me or very, what do you call it, a mediocre service. So they need total attention. Yes, they love you. My residents are very good. They all love us. They, they all love us. We get, we get great benefits from the company. They get good care of the company. We are one of the few companies which give free Wi-Fi to all the crew members, unlimited use. You can lose and as much Wi-Fi as you want. There's no, you don't have to pay for it. A lot of other companies charge for it. My other company used to charge for me. So I used to pay hundred dollars for a month, but my, this company, free internet, you don't have to do anything. And a lot of other facilities. If you want to study, if you want to study, let's say, you are a diploma in, in hotel management, but what you want to do your MBA in hotel hospitality management, you can go to the HR manager and ask uh, and fill up the form and they will pay you. The company will pay you to do your MBA. You don't have to do it from your pocket. They will pay. They will give you at least two lakh rupees a year, two to three lakh rupees a year. So do you, you can do your MBA. They will not ask you a question, but of course you have to show them the paperwork and everything that you're going to do MBA from certain college. And this is going to be good beneficial for you. The company will pay for you. There's no doubt about it. So 
tell me which company will pay for you MBA. They will pay for it. There's, there's a budget for that. And you can do, you can learn uh, car driving. You can learn scuba diving. You can learn whatever you want. You can do a carpenter shop. You can learn bakery shopping. They will pay for it as your personal growth. You can do certificates with your own, um, whatever you like. You want to do a management course uh, from any of the universities in India or any of the, any of the trainings you can do. You want to do a barista course. You want to do a bartending course. Company will pay for it as long as it's it's genuine. You're not going to abuse the facility. Company is going to pay for it. So that's one of the biggest advantage we have. A lot of people have done self development, and trust me, a lot of boys have done their MBAs without paying from their pocket. So tell me, which company will give you two lakh rupees to do your MBA? No one. I can tell you that in the whole world, except few companies. So that's where the different of the organization comes from. There's other other companies as well in the world which. It takes care of you. They give you self-development and make you a stronger candidate. But you have to stick to the organization. How long is the contract for? How how many how many months you go on for? Okay, the 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 waiters will do around about um, six months and two months off. And uh, if you become uh, a manager or a manager position, then you do four months and two months off. So do you get paid when you're at home for the management or for the waiters? Do they get anything paid or no? No, not for the waiters. Uh, management, yes. Uh, you get paid uh, when you're vacation, but it's all in your contract. So it depends upon how you deal with your contract. Great, 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 great. Guys, you can ask questions, guys. Absolutely be, be free to ask. As yep. uh, promoter has rightly said, they don't advertise the openings. It's only done on LinkedIn. And do they prefer a lot from cruise line experience or they take freshers from the hotels? Like uh, somebody, somebody has done up for two years in, in, uh, in a five-star property in, in Mumbai. Yeah. 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 yeah, we do take uh, freshers from, we do take freshers from uh, five-star hotels. But yeah. guys, remember, you have to work for a very good organization. I would say, let's do, I've taken a, we have taken a boy from four seasons uh, in Mumbai. Uh, so that kind of organization, if you're going to be, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm not going to be very rude over here, but I'm going to be very practical and very straightforward. When you start your career, do not go to a small organization that will hamper your career for the long run. Go for a big organization, work for a big brand. It will set your path and then you can go anywhere you want. It doesn't matter. After 15, 20 years in the industry, you can go join a smaller brand at a higher position. Nobody will ask you a question. But right now, when you are in the beginning of your career, please do not make a mistake of joining a small institute or a small organization. It will not help you to grow it will stop your progress and then you'll be suffering and uh, only getting, uh, what do you call it, uh, losing your confidence in the service. And do not do that. Join a bigger organization, stay there for a while. I know the salaries are not great in bigger organization, but don't worry. That will be coming back later to you when you get a bit experience, you will make that money up. But the, you, the things you will learn would be very different. Guys, questions from your end, anyone guys? Uh, so many guys ask, please. Yeah. I have a question. Yes, Kasim. Like, uh, for instance, let us, let's take an example. In uh, seas, there are many storms happening. Okay. Yes. And in that case, like if something damages to the ship. Yeah. And like if an apartment breaks down, so yeah. who is going to pay for it? Is the, is the owner who is going to pay for it or is it the ship owner? See guys, uh, whenever, remember, uh, whenever there's a storm in the ocean, there's a, remember, there's a captain, there's a deck officers, they take care of it. We, we don't have to go through the storm. Even Yogesh knows he worked on the ship. Yeah. We, take a, we take a different route. We avoid the storm as much as we can because going through a storm is, is, is highly dangerous. It not, it's not about just the property. It's about the lives as well of the people. So, yeah. So we don't, nobody will take, no captain in the world will say, listen, go to, let's, let's have fun. We go through the storm. No, nobody will do that because it's very, very dangerous. So what we, they do is they avoid the storm totally. And they only go through that part where they can say that, yes, the ship can handle this much of wind, this much of water height, the height of the waves. Then they go through that part of the, but they will never go through the storm. They will never risk because remember, uh, it is not just about the ship. It's about the lives as well. And once if something happens right now in, in this world of um, internet and media, one small mistake happens will be very bad for the company's reputation. And company's reputation is our job. If we don't have a good company, we don't have a job. Remember that. So no captain will risk that one because if he, if something goes wrong, there are a lot of passengers and guests on board. They will put 
with the internet available right now 24/7 anywhere in the world they will put pictures that oh my god captain is very bad and blah 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 all these bad um, uh, statements and bad publicity from the people into the media it will hamper the company a lot and hamper a lot of jobs so i'm sure captain will not take that risk good question uh, anybody else guys please ask yes sir uh, i'm having so yeah abhi karo sir you can go ahead first Uh, actually the thing is i have uh, actually uh, read on google that the uh, the world belongs to msc is it correct or uh... no 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 <laughs> no no <laughs> no no, no, actually, no no yeah okay yeah please tell, give me if you have chance you give that uh, the google thing to us we will tell the company and we'll sort out uh, the legal matters over there because world is a independent company uh, there's no uh, we are not linked to another company the company's name is residency limited Which under the name that it's been registered, the name of the ship is the World, and it's only itself. It's an independent company. We don't owe to anybody. We don't owe to MSC. So that's a wrong information. Please do not go there. Okay. Uh, so and one more thing. Uh, yes, as please. for you, have, as for you have told us that the residents are owned by the millionaires. Yes. Okay. So uh, is there any sort of thing that the apartments are rented for yearly purpose or they own for uh, lifelong? they own for life long that's their home it's like you buying a home in in india that's your home okay. so once you paid for it you made your registration uh, to the government you paid your taxes now it becomes your home so you can sell it whenever you want and you can stay as long as you want that's for your life long that's exactly what's happened there so they all the apartments are registered in united states uh, on a single apartment basis and uh, they own it until they sell it or they give it if they want to give it to their son remember what we have policy is let's say if you buy the apartment and you and your wife they are the only owners not your kids so remember when the kids will only can own the apartment when the owners the father will say listen i'm going to change my registration and now my son is also the owner otherwise the sons are not the owners remember that they will not automatically become owners same like in india so you have uh, to... yeah. one more thing like yes. if i own a apartment over there yeah. could i rent it to someone uh you can rent it to someone but not like uh, we are not a rental company so what we do is uh we we have some we have some days you can rent it over to somebody but the guy who is renting need to have a profile as well you just cannot send anybody to the uh, to the ship and say listen go have a vacation on my house no it won't happen like that you have to send a lot of informations about the people who are coming uh they cannot be from i'm i'm sorry i'm not going to be very rude and i'm not going to be very judgmental but they can, just cannot be very ordinary people they have to be to that level of people which are on board we don't because there will be a lot of objections from other residents so you know how it means we don't want rowdy people coming on board and making a drama uh, uh, on other kind of bad things which people do uh, and and abuse staff there's a lot of things which happens around the world i'm sure yogesh have seen when uh, yeah. people get people get abused on ships and get drunk and everything a lot of incidents happens on cruise ships which i have seen in my life as an well. i'm sure yogesh have seen as well we don't want that kind of thing happening to the to the world it's not uh, it's a it's a community of people successful people they want to live the life they want to live they are not there to you know to have some issues because that's for them it's very very personal it's like your home it's like your society if we have a problem in a society it shows bad about a society and uh, promos i would like to ask is suppose uh, as you said the ship goes to uh, different ports so one of the guests decides to get have a party on board and get uh, 10 15 not friends is he allowed to do so yes yes he is allowed to do so um, we have certain uh, rules and regulations uh, that people uh, can bring on their guests to have a dinner or a party for the mm -hmm. numbers you, they have to let us know in advance there's a system for that they have to let us know 30 days in advance Uh -huh. we can start preparing it they we need to have all the names security has all, all the names and put a lot of a lot of paperwork and a lot of uh, uh, clauses to it and yeah. then and they need to let us know what they want to eat in advance we set up the menu for them because you can i'm sure you guys you can imagine if somebody comes with 50 people in board and say let's let's have a dinner it won't be possible on a cruise ship right? <laughs> so they have to let us all the information to us and then we will get them in um, just to let you know when we were in mumbai Uh, the mm -hmm. bajaj the bajaj family the rahul bajaj from the bajaj family came for dinner on board so i had the privilege of making meeting mr rahul bajaj that night okay so so 
of course, the, the clientele is very high as well. It's obviously you can see the people. So a lot of are there, uh, are there any Indian clientele as of now? Anyone from India who has uh, taken uh, uh, part of the world? Yes, we have two families from India, uh, which own apartment. I'm sorry, I cannot tell you the name because yeah, yeah that's okay, that's okay. But there are two from India, so that's nice. Yes, yes. That's two nice. people from India, one from Delhi and one from Mumbai. So they're very, very successful businessmen. Um, so they own apartments as well. Wow, uh, this ship has been uh, launched in 2001. That's one. what you told me, right? So yes, yes. Uh, yeah, after 15, 20 years, it's a time that the ship goes off. Uh, you know, it goes into scrap. Uh, because there's a certain limit for it. So if a new ship comes in, they still get a place over there, right? The same yes. cabbage, the same thing will be given to them. So, and, well, we have not got any new ship so far. And yeah, uh, yeah the, the, the ship, I think the ship will go on. The ship is absolutely in spotless condition. I can tell you that. Okay. Um, I work for Cunard and I work for a, a ship. Uh, I don't want to name the ship. It's been around about 15 years for that ship as well. Mm -hmm. and, and I think the same age for the world, but they totally look different. That the, the the ceilings in my other ship is falling apart because we're 15 years old. Okay. <laughs> as, okay. as you know, as you know, you worked in PO, Arcadia, and all the ship. They yes. get old. Same classification is is exactly the sister of Arcadia, um, um, but the world is in a because there's a lot of money involved in it. There's a uh, the, the the budgets for maintenance are very high, so we just do not we don't compromise on any of the maintenance. So that's the big the best thing for okay. us is that the budgets are very good. Um, and then we do the maintenance immediately. Of course, now you know that there's a three-year maintenance for every every ship. So that means the ship will probably live longer nowadays uh, from last 10 years than before. There's a lot. There's a three-year maintenance clause for every ship, so they have to be maintained. Okay. So they, can, they can run longer. So that's the good thing now. Okay. Are the pets allowed on board? Uh, are the uh, high-profile guests allowed to get the pets? No, no, no. We don't allow pets on board. Uh, we don't allow pets on board at all. So we so far we have said no to it. Mm -hmm. The reason I don't know is a managing committee, the owners decided, the resident committee decides it. They say no, this so we cannot ask them questions. So that's good actually, yeah. uh, because pets. Have uh, you come across any guest uh, asking you this question that why are we not uh, 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 because they are billionaires and uh, they want to get their pet because they must be having pets at home, but obvious. So did they come yeah. across to you where they were asking the management for? Uh, they, they, I think they were. Uh, there was few of the residents asking to bring their pets on. But bringing pets on is also another challenge because you need to have yeah. a certain areas for them. Yes. And, and uh, we are not that big of a ship where you can have everything on board. There was a, there was a last committee meeting. I was there. Um, I was not sitting. I was just taking care of them. But I heard that somebody wants to have a submarine on board. So can oh you imagine? <laughs> yeah, submarine on board. <laughs> so they wanted to have a submarine on board because they want to go underwater diving. <laughs> oh, okay. okay. Yeah. So, but the question was where to keep the submarine. They can have the submarine. They can buy it. Not a big deal. Yes. But where are you going to keep it on the ship? You need a space for ship on the ship. But a space on the ship. Absolutely. So, uh, people with money. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. With my experience, when women have money, they can talk anything. I can tell you. Their ideas go wild. Absolutely, absolutely. And uh, so do you have, uh, so do you have a helipad in the area? Yeah, uh, yes, do, we do have helipad. Yes, we do. Yes. And that's used for whom? Like, what for? What purpose is the helipad used for? So the helipad so far have been used for a couple of medical emergencies. Um, that's what we we call the helicopter. We don't have a helicopter all the time on board, but we did call the um, emergency helicopter. Ah, okay, okay. For the medav uh, me medicinal uh, vac, uh, medav, mm. we call it. Uh, but what we do is when we go to places like Antarctica and Arctic, we need to carry a helicopter because of medical clause. Uh, the ship is so far away from the uh, from the the closest medical facility around the world. You need to have a helicopter so that if something happens, you can take it quickly to the hospital. So we do carry. We only carry helicopters when uh, we going to Arctic and Antarctica. Mm -hmm. so you wanna have a question? Yes, please. Yes, Abdul. Uh, they have any age restriction or education criteria for a new Chinese? Uh, guys, remember that um, in hospitality, um, the, the uh, education is very. And of course, education is necessary. I'm not saying it's not necessary, but guys, what kind of education they need for the uh, journey? But guys, remember, if you, I will tell you the thing is, everybody does a diploma or a degree in hotel management or some kind of certificate. 
but if you if you work in a good organization let's say example if you work for obroys or four seasons or jw marriotts for 3 4 years your educational degree will just become a, on on a paper it will people will see it but they will look more into jw marriotts than your degree where you did it from okay. remember that the degree is only for the beginning of course you, of course the, the the good thing you have to have a, some kind of a education from hospitality school very that's now very mandatory nowadays because the nobody has time to teach you what is a cocktail fork look like what is a teacup looks like what's it what a side plate is what's a dessert plate is that's where you cover up that's a i think that's the most important thing where you what you need to learn in catering colleges look get your basics right because i have some incidents where people are asking me people ask that what is teaspoon and what is a demita spoon i don't have time to tell them so what we tell them is thank you very much for coming but we don't have time to tell all these things to you so that's why you are hampering yourself uh, for for a job so the 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 education is very important i would always say get your educated self that clear your basic but learn from it a lot of people go to catering college but they don't learn from it i go around every day 10 resumes in my life in in my working day and people cannot even answer what's the difference between a teacup and a demita cup so that's very sad so i don't know what you did in the catering colleges so get yourself get yourself a degree i'm not saying go to a fancy laroche and get a degree it's it's the same thing um if you get it from bharti vidya piro metro raps institute it's a very good institute learn from it there's a lot of uh, yogesh has got so many years of experience that he can teach you each and everything what goes around with the interview so learn from it go to a work in organization now you have a whole package ready for yourself you have a good uh, college and you have a good experience now nobody can stop you to going to any cruise job that's the way i would tell you is that's the way you go for your cruise career or any hey, career and any is uh, right idea atul one minute a very good question you ask i'll tell you one thing if uh, in front of promote sir there are two candidates sitting one is a diploma and one is a degree guy and trust me if the confidence level of the diploma guy is really good he will go ahead and pick up the guy who has done diploma he will not look at the degree one because if he's not able to answer the questions or maybe he's not able to interact with what he should be doing he will choose the guy with the uttermost confidence the good personality will go ahead with diploma right. trust me yeah that's very true that yogesh has hit the nail on the head if i have a two guys exactly the same the guy who has more knowledge we will pick me up it doesn't matter what you have done because we are worried about his knowledge and skill and attitude not about his degree degree doesn't matter for us anymore so if, even you have done a one year uh, diploma or a degree uh, age restriction they have any age, age restriction yes i would say after 35 they will say no to you most probably for a new journey for a new journey yes thank you so i'm sh- i'm sure you're not 35 now <laughs> <laughs> yeah after 35 we will say no to you it's not about saying that we don't we don't want to take you guys but the thing is uh yogesh is there he would know that it's a very tough job guys if yes. you are not young you will not able to that the job what we do in the beginning as a waiter and assistant waiter same like me same like yogesh when we were young we were 24 25 we could do it if you ask me now to do it no chance we can do it yeah. so uh, so that's why you need a youth and energy to do that job and then uh, you can be successful after 35 i don't think you're young anymore your bones will not uh, will not carry the weight of your shoulder and the tray and you will have more issues so how many language you may to not to join uh, guys i would request you to uh, the most important thing is please uh, i would always say to everybody if once you have decided to step in hospitality start polishing your english i had a same issue uh, my english got better when i started working in the hotels uh, it's not like i can speak when i was your age i could not speak english fluently as well i, I can i can tell you for truth but when i went to the hot, hospitality i started working in hotel i worked on my english very well i i started to speak english everywhere i i, I didn't care even if i spoke wrong i spoke but that's what i how i learned and i improved my english english is very important if you can learn a foreign language that's another bonus that's another bonus for you if you can speak french german spanish uh japanese uh for that matter it's a great bonus italian uh, it will add up to your bonus and then you might open up another doors for you especially for um, you know and all these uh, front office jobs like receptionist and international hostesses and translators and everything there's a lot of jobs um, 
so far there are boys but there's probably more girls in that area than the boys as well but of course it can open a door for you you can join you don't have to only rely on english speaking cruise companies but you can always join uh, german cruise companies and italian cruise companies and spanish cruise companies and japanese cruise companies if you can speak other languages because now you can do any jobs so it's it's going to be very easy for you the advantage that indians have is i'm sure yogesh would agree is that because we could speak english better than the other nationalities like filipinos and indonesian and mexicans it has given us a lot of advantage working on a cruise ship we went to a probably more higher management level positions because we could speak a very good english and uh, so that's an advantage so if you can work on it it's amazing uh, go ahead and uh, improve yourself and uh, learn a language it's a bonus there's one thing promote sir what he said i really in my heart i will say that english uh, any classes will not help you improve your english it's you interact with people talk with them that is the only thing which will take you to another level no classes aap bolte hai bhai sir ye class jaunga main wo class jaunga kuch nahi hone wala they will not teach you anything the verbiage the pronunciation will only help you when you speak with someone rajesh sir also keeps telling you all talk with each other guys hum hindi marathi mein bahut acha baat karte hain it's very fluent very nice no mistakes but when it comes to english we all fumble why we fumble because we don't talk english at all The only thing we say is thank you, bye bye, welcome, and we end with the day. Speak with each other, guys. Trust me. One once a day also you speak. Now what promoter said. That's how he improved in, uh, improved his English. Can you believe him? I don't feel like he what he's saying is even true. I feel like he's born with a good English, but he said that I was struggling with English. But today, look at him. The way he's speaking, the way I am speaking, the way Rajesh sir is speaking. We have not gone to any classes. We are not from high five schools. practice is what made us perfect that's all guys right pramod sir very very good very true very true guys don't be shy okay i agree when yes. i came last time as well uh, in bar in metro and raps in bharati vidyapeet don't be shy to speak english even if it's wrong doesn't matter try try to speak english and and as as yogesh said don't go to any classes i'm telling you no classes can help you <laughs> if you speak then only you get better that's the language Yeah. so please speak please speak whenever you are in the class uh, i always say uh, whenever you are in the in the in the college speak english only don't worry don't yeah. speak in marathi i can hear marathi and hindi everywhere i go uh, but you should stop it it's a bad habit and bad habits are very hard to get away so start speaking i think i should request to all the participants and all the students that speak in english and it will increase your confidence level a lot more um, you can feel more confident if you know how to speak Yeah, because you know, my promoter is saying that uh, put the habit of English. Because tomorrow, when if you become a waiter on the world or any cruise liner, and if you if you're standing near the dumb waiter and talking in your mother tongue, the guest will feel that you're talking about them in their language, which yeah. is not right. It will be a big complaint, guys. Yeah. So if you put the habit now, you will never ever make mistakes. Yeah. Trust me. Yeah. You guys, Pramoji, share screen. Ban kar liye. Pramoji, oh, okay. close the share screen. Okay. One second, sir. Ah. Uh, so what do you have to say on this? Am I right? Yeah, you are very correct. Uh, 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 Yogesh is very right. Very, very true. I had so many incidents in my career. I had an incident last contract with me where my couple of my boys were speaking in Tagalog with a Filipino language. I had a massive issue, especially in company like me where the the resident, the lady, the madam, the wife of the owner came to me and said, "I don't like the way they are speaking," and that's very serious for us. these two guys were reprimanded and they were given verbal counseling luckily we didn't give them warning but and trust me it stopped incidentally nobody started to speak in any other language it's very very serious matter because in cruise ships if you guys yogesh would agree and rajesh would agree agree if you cannot get a complaint against you remember it's very serious matter yeah. Yeah. couple of complaints and you're going home okay. yep three there you have a three warning system one warning two warning three warning three warning thank you very much thank you for coming goodbye so if some, and the, the most the even you have a complaint from your work performance it's we can handle it but if there's a complaint from guest or passenger or resident it's a very serious matter for you and it might it might put pressure on you which is not good so why should we do things wrong when we know how to correct them anybody yes, so what is the contract duration one year two year uh guys the contract duration is all depends upon different companies uh some companies have 9 months contract uh, like msc and costa uh, ncl norwegian cruise lines i think pno has a 9 months contract yeah. Yeah. until you until you finish your 5 years 
some some companies do six months, like my company do six months. Royal Caribbean does six months. Disney does six months. Uh, Cunard does six months. So it all depends. And also we have a like in like in in PNO, like in PNO. If you finish five years, you can get down your contract to six months. So there's a facility of that one as well in in PNO cruises. It's all. How depends. can they will renew? Uh, when when you got over. Yeah, when you come home, when you come home uh, after a few days or a, a probably let's say you have a sixty days vacation, about thirty days time, you might get your renewal contract. And when you sign off, there will be appraisal. When you give an appraisal, they will be written. Uh, okay, I'm sure the wordings might be different. We're ready for rehire, the maitre d or the manager will tick that yes, he is good enough to be rehired. There's a tick over there, and then. you will come to know that you are fit to be rehired and you will be rehired when you come back so in 30 days time there will be a by via email you get all the papers joining papers including your contract letters sir what is the working hour on cruise line uh, for initial joining yeah okay the working hours um uh, shubham right yes sir yeah okay the the working hours normally uh, the working hours varies in different companies Uh, we have a 10 hour policy now because of new regulations uh, even in pno we yogesh will agree but yes, guys sir. by guys remember if you have work you have to work there's no 10 hours anymore so what we do is uh, there's overtime uh, overtime as well uh, which is different rates in different companies but of course you're going to work 10 hours a day according to the rules and regulation you might go up to 11 you might go up to 12 but you know never go above 14 that's the regulation we ne- we can never ask a staff to work more than 14 but i would say rather 10 to 11 hours are every day uh, usual working hours maybe 12 uh, and, uh, even there is no any uh, weekly off and so there is no weekly off sir uh, when you join the cruise ship thank you very much for saturdays and sundays there is no <laughs> sunday every uh, day is monday every day is same day <laughs> every day so for they have any shift yes there is a dip- there is a lot of shifts if i go into shifts i'm sure we'll have a one another lecture of one hour uh we can discuss it another day uh, all the shifts yes you have shifts different shifts you work in different shifts uh basically uh, very very simple i can say you work breakfast lunch and dinner yes sir so you have work breakfast shift then you have a break then you have a lunch shift you have a break then you have a dinner shift of course there's a lot more other factors to it there's an afternoon tea in pno and cunard we are famous for that so that's another duty and then you have a uh, public health inspection extra then you have a boat drill so from morning to evening you are there that's it that's the end of the day <laughs> but but that's not every day but there's some days where we call it in 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 cruise ship language we call it a full package okay so full package is breakfast public health inspection coast guard drill lunch afternoon tea and dinner that means you start 7 in the morning and you finish 11 in the night with only breaks to get shower and eat something that's it but that's uh, it can happen sometimes but normally you work 10 to 11 hours a day um, that's round about but remember the work intensity is very high Uh, remember in hotels you have monday where only you might get a uh, very less crowd in your restaurants tuesday yes saturday sunday and thursday you get a lot of people in cruise ship every day is same so you're going to do same number of breakfast same number of lunch same number of dinner the intensity will remain the same it will never never happen like land that oh maybe one off day there is less people coming to your restaurant to eat it won't happen the so intensity remains the same that's why you get tired because the intensity is lot higher oh uh, yes so uh, oh uh... Uh, first of all so i uh, hope everything is good back there at your place yeah thank you very much only my question is so uh, that like you said that in the end you get the appreciation of form yeah. and everything that is a yes. performance good or no yeah so does that even depend upon your promotion as well yes your appraisals are part of your promotion process um there's a rating process there's a um, the various companies have various rating systems uh there would be another long topic um uh, which which we can discuss but it's going to be a long process of course your your appraisal will decide if you're good enough to go to the next position or not because appraisals are given by your manager the maitre d or restaurant managers and then when the opportunity comes up the restaurant manager and the assistant manager probably in in liaison and and discussing think that okay who's going to go up we have a opening and now let's say which boy is ready to be a waiter or a head waiter and then how the if your appraisals are good and you have a, a great um, confidence and you have a great reputation of being a very good worker and a very loyal worker very honest worker trust me it doesn't matter you might be one year old or you might be two contracts old and somebody might be 10 years old you will get the you will get the promotion it doesn't work on cruise ships anymore where you are 10 years and you might get promotion no it doesn't happen anymore 
you, if you are two years or three years old and you are a dynamic person with a good rating uh, and good comments from passengers and a good reputation among the managers, you will get the position. That's for sure. Thank you very much. Yeah. Yeah. Anybody else would like to ask anything before we can close for the day? Yes, sir. I uh, I would like to ask one question. Yes. Actually, sir, the thing is, uh, it is said that there are chefs allotted in the actually uh, in the world. The residents are there. Okay. So th the residents are consisting their own kitchens. Yes. Okay. So it is said that uh, the chefs are higher in their kitchen. Uh, no. Uh, I think that information is wrong. Uh, we have kitchens in all the apartments because remember, if you have a home, you need to have a kitchen. But our kitchen is not like what we what we have at home. It's not gas uh, kitchen. It's a um, induction kitchen. So there's no fire. Of course, if the resident wants to have a chef cooking for them, yes, we provide the facility, but they have to pay for it. I mean, it's their money anyway. But uh, they have to pay because you have to take one guy out from your kitchen and send to the apartment to cook. So that means one person would be less in the operation. Yes, the guests can ask for somebody to cook for them. We, we do that facility. We call it call a chef. That means you can call the chef to cook for you, something very special. Oh, so what's the home port? What is the home port of the world? Uh, sir, we don't have a home port, but the, the head office is in Florida, as usual, you know where the, all the offices are. Okay. Uh, we, we, when we go to Miami, sort of uh, Fort Lauderdale, it sort of becomes a home port. But technically, we don't have a home port. We don't dock, like we don't stay in one area for like a, a cruise, continuous cruise. We just keep on going, keep on going. Okay, so what is the maximum, uh, which is the maximum country you go around the most in the world? Which is the uh, maximum? No, I think United States would be where we stay a lot more. Okay. Uh, because remember, the United States, uh, of course, you know, Yogesh, the US has around about 27 to 30 ports they have. Yes. The, the country with highest number of port facilities. And uh, of course, you can stay in Miami and you can go to Caribbean and come back and all these places. So it can be, it's very easy for them to cruise. As you know, the, the summer cruising and winter cruising in, uh, in Caribbean. So that's how, that's how we plan, but uh, we keep on going, we don't stay in one place. The, the, the only difference is that when we stay in port, let's say we stay in New York for that matter. So we don't stay for one day or two days, we stay for seven days, eight days. Last time we were staying in Sydney for nine days. I mean, I, mean, I don't know what we were doing in Sydney for nine days, but we, had, we were so busy. We had so many uh, functions and VIP guests coming in. We were the Prime Minister of Australia. I'm sure you know Steve Wogg, the cricket captain of Australia. He, <laughs> Yeah, he came on board and there were a lot of big dignitaries came on. So we stay, wherever there's a prominent place, we stay in Mumbai for four days. Can you imagine that people come to Mumbai to see the ship? A lot of big people. So that kind of, we stay on there just to uh, stay. Yeah. yeah. One well, so last we, question from, from my end. Uh, once you dock a port and the guest goes out, because people are now getting to know about the world, uh, because you become famous. Yeah. So these guys are billionaires. What yeah. about the safety on, on, on shore? Because there are a lot of people definitely uh, coming towards the ship near the docks. So what is the safety of this, uh, these billionaires who go on port? See, guys, remember, uh, uh, these, people, these people don't have to go and get a taxi. So what happens is whenever they want to go out, there's a, of course, Yogesh would probably understand there's a dock and there's a yeah. inside, inside dock and there's a gates and security is there. So because they are so influential, uh, like in Mumbai, the, the cars were coming very close to the ship. It never happens for cruise ship guests because they are not, a, because they were so influential and pull the strings in governments. So their cars and their Mercedes and their all these Audis and all these Rolls Royces very come close to the ship. So basically wow. they get out from the ship straight into the car and they go away. They don't have to go to the gate even. That's wow. what, yeah. Well, we have to do all the security. And if, if somebody is very important, then you have, um, I can tell you when um, the Prime Minister of Australia was on board, um, you can imagine the security. There were dogs everywhere. There were commandos everywhere. There were police everywhere. So it becomes uh, uh, like, a, like a big castle or a barricade. <laughs> yeah, it becomes, it becomes very difficult for the other, other people to, as well because then uh, there are a lot of checkings and a lot of uh, lines for... Uh, uh, scrutiny and everything. It's, it's become very difficult for everybody to find out where they are. Thank you so much. Anybody else, guys, before we could close down? Anybody else? When you got your first contract, sir? Uh, my first contract? I, okay, I started, uh, it was a long time ago. I was 24 years old. Um, uh, 23, 24 years old, I think so. I started 2000, 2003. My first contract was with a company called Festival Cruise Lines, which is not there anymore. They got bankrupt. 
um, so my first contact was nine months, guys. I was a bus boy. I'm um, Yogesh would understand the term. <laughs> Those times, yeah, the bus boy means you only do is you only carry dirty trays. That was it. Yeah. So bus boy means you bus the tray. That's it. The only thing you do was you get water, you get milk, you get tea, coffee, um, you get the salads, you get the dressings. You do all the all the work for a waiter like a like an assistant waiter. Yeah. This you call it bus boy. Now this position is not there anymore. I'm sure it's somewhere in small kind of small cruise ship, but the bus boy position is gone. That time I was bus boy. I was fortunate enough to finish that contract, and then I joined Cunard as assistant waiter. My next contract, and then I stick to them for 14 years. My first contract was nine months. There was no human resources those times, so the food and beverage manager and the maitres were two gods. I was telling Rajesh, you, do you have to go and touch the feet of every morning for the god to bless you that your job is safe? It was very difficult times go those days. Um, Yogesh would understand. Yeah, yeah, that that was very difficult. You cannot you cannot say anything to anybody. You just have to keep your neck down and work, uh, and learn whatever you can learn. There was no no help. There was no nobody knew anything. You just have to find your way around, and actually that made us tougher. I'm sure Yogesh would understand. It made us tougher to work in cruise ships, and it 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 just it just went away from there. But I learned a lot from there, uh, from that uh, ship. It was very difficult work, but it paid off. It paid off. Uh, yeah, uh, because those times job was a job. You cannot leave the job and go back. Uh, there was uh, nothing much in India those times. Yes, India yes. was just opening up, so. Uh, now you have Marriotts and uh, Hyatt and all these hotels. For there was not nothing that time, so it was very difficult to have a job. Yes. Anybody yes, else? Sir. Yes, yeah. sir. So it is said that uh, the experience on board, on the ship, and uh, on the land in hotel it differs a lot. It affects a lot. Yes. Means if I if uh, if I'm working in a cruise for ten years and mm. then I am thinking to get on the land in a hotel, yeah. so. The experience would be too less for the online hotel. So yeah. What is the difference? Why is so? And what is the difference? I think I think this is this is um, very ironic, and uh, that some of the managers do this one, but I don't agree to that one. I can tell you that the the cruise ships actually works more tougher than the land. It just makes you more better as well because you actually you are handling a lot of situations at the same time. Uh, when I was working in India, uh, of course I worked for um, uh, big properties. But actually, I became much better on the on the cruise ships than in the land because, in the land, the work was it was not what I expected of standards. Um, and uh, if if somebody says that that the, the ship experience is not counted, I will not agree to that. If you work on the ship, you will increase uh, your experience and your ability a much more stronger way than in land. I can tell you that one. And you will be more successful when you come and work in the land because you. You can manage multiple tasks at same time. There's a lot. I can tell you, Yogesh would understand. He's been to a management position in cruise ship. There's a lot of things go in your head. It's not easy. Uh, you're not you're not handling one outlet. You're handling multiple outlets, and you have multiple tasks going around. And there's multiple complaints coming around. You're talking to everybody. There's no hiding there. The guests will not go away. In in India, in land, what happens is the guest complains and they go away. You might not see them again. But in in cruise ship, you will not go away. They will be there next morning to catch you, until they until they go in two weeks and they go home. But trust me, you have to face the situation head on. There is no other choice. What Pramod sir said is absolutely right. You know why it's tough? Because in India, there is only Indians working with you. Yeah. But on as a restaurant manager, he has to handle different nationalities. Everybody comes with their own problems. Remember, and Filipino is the most toughest nationality to handle. The unity is rock solid. They won't bother to hit you. Yeah. They don't care about their job because they've got multiple jobs. But we have to very be very careful while working on board, guys. Remember. Yep, there's always multi. And also remember, guys, in in, in India, when when I was a manager in India, I I never faced any uh, personal issues in India so much. There was not so many Indians complaining. But in cruise ships, um, Yogesh would know there's a, there's a lot of personal issues. Which actually come under the jurisdiction of restaurant managers, fighting, abusing, verbal. Yes. He he took my teacups. He took my cutlery. He took my yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, and this these small issues are there. Are there? Remember, guys, there is not in in India. Every restaurant has fifteen, twenty staff. In cruise ships, in a dining room, there are at least hundred staff. So, 
can you imagine if you have 100 waiters under you i mean 50 waiters 15 assistant waiters and few more other things and it's a lot of lot of things happening there's a lot of different nationalities they speak different languages they have dif- behave in different way some nationalities are very arrogant they they snap in in snap of finger they get upset very quickly indians are more level headed they don't get upset very quickly they handle it they want to do the hard work there's a lot of issues like this you have to handle this plus remember there are a lot of issues um uh, in the galley as well galley and the waiters the chef the waiters utility and the waiters there's always confrontation going on somewhere there's a, there's a it's a big ship of 400 500 people the department is almost 500 people food and beverage so there will be a lot of liking not land of course remember you're staying in a cabin with two people or four people and they are all of different nationalities uh they also have a different habits uh, they eat in a different way you eat in a different way you sleep in a different way you want to see a indian channel they want to see a filipino channel so all these things come under restaurant manager's jurisdiction so he has to sort out before it goes out of the hand and goes to the senior uh-huh. management and then then the restaurant manager looks bad so there's a lot of issues like this um plus the food there's a lot of issues with the food as well sometimes the food is not good sometimes the food is good and uh, other things there's a lot of issues with the relationships as well ship is a very small place so people have relationships with the uh, with girls and boys and that also is a very big part of headache because <clears throat> some of them don't last they have fights and they have uh, people get uh, there's a lot of alcohol on board the alcohol is free people get drunk and there's a lot of money involved remember guys remember guys uh, all this young staff uh, young guys like you go to the ship and suddenly after 3 4 months your wallet is full with dollars and uh, you want to have a good life uh and that that causes a lot of issues uh people get drunk people get carried away uh, it's it's not a easy gig this doesn't happen normally on the on the land so it's a very very uh, difficult place to work hi you can hear me yogesh yeah 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 we are, i'm i'm listening to you yeah yeah so there there are a lot of other issues regarding of course there's a pressure of the performance as well uh you have your you have your own rating system sometime you might get a very difficult guest and you is very difficult to handle it's not easy it's not easy there's a lot you only learn by experience and get better and better how to handle situations but it's it's very hard work guys remember and that's why you get paid well i mean it's simple as that you only get paid money, well yeah money does not come easy guys correct yeah money does, is, it's a hard work that's yeah. all yeah yogesh said it right on the spot it's hard work and always remember guys it's 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 our fault there a lot of young boys and girls i have seen all my life i mean yogesh have seen as well people like you 25 year old 24 year old come from very humble backgrounds i came from a humble background like you guys i mean yogesh would agree he is also from a very humble background we have come yeah. from very no- yeah. Yeah. very normal families uh, and suddenly we see a um, pocket full of dollars with lakh and lakh and half rupees mind gets boggled of course i mean we are young people we want to enjoy ourselves you know we want to do whatever we want to don't get carried away don't do all the silly mistakes i've seen a lot of people in my life doing silly yes. mistakes and losing their jobs so it's 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 a great place to work of course it will give you after a couple of con- i'm telling you after one contract if you go to the ship and work and you finish a one contract come back to us and say what do you feel and you will feel a lot of difference you will feel a lot more confident you will feel a lot of difference that you you have um, um, worked in a some very nice place your attitude will change your body language will change your mindset will change it's a, it's a, it's, a, it's a total experience anybody questions guys i loved it that uh, your interaction was absolutely lovely today guys the way you all came across with questions lovely guys anybody else before we could close down yes sir like, so yes jamshi yeah. uh yes actually uh, i've heard a lot in fact i've heard from your last seminar as well that uh, a lot of people quit on the second third or fourth week uh, yeah is it true yes very true it's very true i'm um, yogesh would agree that uh, what we say in in cruise ship is if you will quit you will work quit in four weeks before four weeks i've seen people quitting in first day i've seen people quitting in the hotel itself uh, once upon a time i was joining the ship i was a uh, i think i was a head waiter there and i was told by a company that there's a new guy coming first time please take care of him he was having dinner with me he started crying i said why are you crying he said he is missing his wife and daughter i said okay no worries really all right he could not take it he didn't join the ship from the hotel he signed off he went back so this thing happens guys it's not a difficult it's it's we all had families i have family i have kids yogesh have family and kids we it's a very difficult place to work uh, when you join uh, 
that's the most important second thing is when you join you are from india brand new right now you have there's a lot of there's a program called inductions so most of the companies have inductions now so you go through a very slow process of uh, getting into getting streamlined into the operation uh, where you study in the morning in on the ship itself and in the evening you will go and join and work so that the pressure is not that much but even after that procedure the, there is a lot of issues where people resign there's a lot of work pressure you need to give i i always tell whenever somebody joins i always say listen give yourself couple of months don't quit even you had a bad day even you had a very bad day don't quit go to your cabin come to somebody talk to somebody uh, have a drink relax sleep watch movie do something to take your mind away and then start again in cruise ship it's day by day i always say take it day by day and things will get better because it's new for you it's not easy for you it's not easy for anybody i can tell you that it's not easy for anybody it's a it's a ship you don't know where the ship is you don't know where the front is you know the where the back is you don't know where the crew mess is suddenly you having so many terminologies of cruise ships people don't get it it's not easy to get all the ports starboard aft uh, front crew mess galley utility it's not easy to get all this terminology it takes time so you need to give yourself time and then you will be successful but don't quit don't quit oh my god i had a 12 hour day and i'm tired that's your life so you have you you have to get on with it so once you will feel bad twice and then after a couple of months you will be all right you will do, you will be set to go for it you will not feel anything bad about it in english we have a simple line guys no pain no gain simple remember no pain means no hard work no money ship there is no no shortcut there are no shortcuts on ship it's only hard work that's it that's smart work that's only two things we follow so i have a question yes yeah like uh, in my religion muslim you are not allowed to deal with alcohol yes. and if i get a job as a waiter and the yeah. person tells me to serve alcohol so can i tell the person like i don't want to serve alcohol kasim Somebody... that's a kasim that's a very difficult question you ask me okay the thing is guys uh, if you if you say we if we if we take up the job if you take up the job as a waiter that means you sign the contract to serve the people okay yes you are muslim and i have a lot of muslim friends with me there are a lot of muslim colleagues and a lot of muslim uh, staff members uh, if you cannot serve alcohol that will be very difficult for you then uh, the company will ask you to leave the organization guys because if you want to join there is a lot of uh, religion see we are hindus and muslims and sikhs and uh, do you think i don't handle beef or it's my job i have signed up to take up a job and i handle yeah. it so i agree uh, the only thing the best thing we can do is guys we can just uh, say sorry to when we work on ship i can tell you um, i don't get time to pray i don't get time to do anything in in india we say are mangalware we will not eat uh, meat or aaj guruware we will not eat meat if you say like this i will die on the ship right so i i what i always do is whenever i go on work i say Uh, bhagwan allah i'm so sorry but this is my bread and butter please forgive me because this bread and butter is for my family and i'm earning on a sincere and loyal basis i'm sure the allah and the god will continue to help you yes. we have to earn something you know it's as long as i don't eat beef so i don't eat beef that's it on the ship i never eat beef so for you if you don't drink alcohol but you have to serve it i mean that's part of our job but if you don't want to drink it you cannot drink it i have, I have a lot of muslim friend you don't touch alcohol and they're working with me and we have to respect that we respect that thing that uh, if you are muslim you don't want to eat uh, alcohol but that's part of our job we have to do we have if you cannot say no to the guest guys so one more thing i would like to yeah. ask you so actually i have yeah. two questions yeah uh, one would be sir like you said sir as we go to promotion we go to a higher promotion and yeah. as our salary increases yes so like you said that uh, every day is a monday Yes. So as a position increases, so then do we have a Saturday Sunday off, or it is no. same for everyone? No, no. On the ship, nobody, including general manager guys, don't have a single weekly off. If you are in contract, you work seven days a week, ten hours a day, or eleven hours a day. There's no off for anybody, guys. What happens is, um, what we try to do is, whenever we are in port, whenever the ships are in port. uh in port what happens is normally the guests go away on tours and they're not going to come back in lunch they will be coming back late in the afternoon so we don't need so many staff 
So what we do is on, on a rotation basis, we give them some time off for the staff to go out. So what we call them is a bit of a time off for everybody. We give them lunch off or something off uh, for, so what happens is you work for breakfast. You don't have to come for lunch. You come straight for dinner. So that lunch shift will be, will be your break. So you don't have to work. So at least you get seven, eight hours off. So in seven, eight hours off, you can go out. Uh, let's say you want to see a port. You can go to see anything, whatever you want to go to a beach. You want to have a, a drink. You want to go swimming. You want to go climb a mountain, whatever you want to do, you can do. And when you come back in the evening, you come back to work. So that's how we give, give, give the staff a bit of a time off so they can enjoy themselves and relax themselves out. So that's the procedure on the ship. But that only happens in restaurant department and bar, guys. It doesn't happen much in galley, just to let you know, if you, somebody wants to go in the kitchen. Okay, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, sir, I have a question. Yes, please. Uh, suppose uh, one of the uh, one of the staff is not feeling well and he want to leave. Yeah. And how and how will get? Yeah, that's a uh, that's a very good question. If you are not feeling well, yes. the simple procedure procedure is you go to a doctor. There's a doctor on board, and you go to a doctor and doctor will tell you if you can get off or not. If you have a fever, if you have a fever or if you have a serious uh, ailment, and you cannot work, he will sign you off. Then you go to your cabin and then you rest. But he will tell you please come and see me in so and so time. And then you have to go back and see him as well. But you have to go to doctor. You cannot go yourself and take off sick. Only doctor is a person who can tell you to be off sick. Then he will call the restaurant manager of the maitre d' that um, Atul is sick and he will not be coming to work. And then we will take care of everything else. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Yeah. Anybody else? I think all the girls are very quiet in this uh, batch. Anybody else, guys? Rajesh, Yogesh, any questions? Uh, yes, Prabhu, Anything else, sir? I think uh, people have gone quiet. I was saying that all the girls in this batch are very quiet. I don't know if they are... Um, so they, they, are very they are very talkative, but I don't know what happened to them today. They are all smart. They all keep uh, talking a lot, but I'm surprised. The girls are not showing any enthusiasm going uh, on yeah. the cruise liners, guys. Uh, yeah. Girls, it's absolutely safe for you all. The girls, I already told you all, it's absolutely safe. Yeah. Uh, you can make wonders when you go back on the ship. Trust yeah. me. Uh, yeah, your yeah, girls are uh, girls are very in high demand now. As you know, Yogesh, a lot of uh, companies are having uh, girls as uh, joining them more than the boys. Yes, yes. Yeah. And uh, so basically, a lot of girls have become F and B uh, and hotel managers now. So I got a couple of uh, I have a one lady who's my general manager. So girls have gone higher and become general managers and chief housekeepers and bar managers and everything. Absolutely. Uh, especially from uh, Mumbai. I've, I know a couple of them who have become uh, restaurant managers now on Silver Sea. And they were apprentices with me. Guys, a simple thing I'll say. As long as you think, time will be out of time. Then you'll cry and you'll tell yourself, why did I not try it that time? Correct. Make the most out of it, guys. If you get a chance, don't think what you're doing. Go for it. Yeah. As Pramod sir went, as I went, Rajesh sir went, but this was the toughest choice for our life also and we never said no. We went for it and we did it. So we are keep telling you guys, don't make choices. Yep. To get the chance, go ahead. Uh, yeah, have, there's a lot of... Yeah, please, go ahead. Uh, we have uh, any chance for internship in the cruise? Uh, guys, uh, see what happens is the cruise companies have their own links to have internship in the, on the ships. Uh, they tie up to the colleges all around the world. So our tie up with is one college in Switzerland where they uh, have internship. But guys, we are not a big ship. So we only get three interns in a year. We don't need much because we don't have, uh, we are not that kind of ship where we can, we have time to teach interns. So we only get three interns only for three months between October, November, December. That's all we need. And that's what we got from. But other companies have tie up with, um, 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 uh, with colleges around the world. So I'm not sure uh, if, uh, uh, you, Rajesh sir have um, any feedback on that one that he has some tie up with some any cruise companies for internship or not 
because it's a very it's a very difficult procedure guys it's a very yeah, yeah, yeah. it's a very lengthy procedure to have a internship on board there's a lot of uh, factors there's a lot of paperwork a lot of a lot of uh, uh, permissions and grants i don't know yogesh uh, and rajesh would probably have better idea than me than um, than i have no no guys you don't have any interns on board we don't take interns on board because as rajesh rightly your professor said it is a lot of head paperwork in in that and a lot of issues will be coming up yeah. so uh, they don't prefer interns at all whatever you do you do it over on the land and then you off on the ship because you need a good experience guys yeah we, i would uh, uh, sorry yogesh okay. yeah i would yeah. rather say instead of joining as intern i would rather say join as a staff And, yeah, yeah, and be a part of a success. Have a part of a successful career because it's it in turn diverts their mind and they do all this fancy stuff. And because when they are interns, they don't want to do. I've seen my life. It's a, it's a personal feedback that they don't want to do all the small jobs where uh, assistant waiter and waiters do. They say, "No, I'm an intern. I'm not going to touch the dirty tray." And then suddenly you see them after finishing college, they're back in the line to become assistant waiter. So Absolutely. That's all, Yeah, and then suddenly you are in a bad. Already, we guys, we are working for so long. We know what you did when you were intern, and then you suddenly come back as as a part of the team. Your your attitude already have, um, you know, we already have made up our mind regarding 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 to your attitude, and that's not a right way to go. So please, you know, do not have any uh, what do you call it uh, internship ideas. If you can do in land, it's amazing. You can do in a very good hotel. I can tell you, do your internships in good hotels, and. as uh, make your make your base strong i would i would rather do that say that anybody guys so on the well, so where they take interviews like on screen or something uh at the uh, normally uh, the agencies uh, they all most of the companies i mean all the companies right now in the world have agencies in india so probably you will end up uh, having a interview in the in the agencies itself in mumbai uh, 90% would be in mumbai uh, otherwise if they would like to have an skype interview um, if there is any situation like covid 19 or some issue that's a different story but most probably uh, i think all the companies want to see you uh, when you begin as a career they want to see you personally how you look like uh, if you become a senior manager or a a management level position then you can have a skype interview because now they don't have to look at your personality because you already have experience now they have to look at like i didn't give uh, any uh, front face to face interview for the world it was all skype but that was uh, after long career but in the initially i had to go to airborne and all the other companies to give interviews and i was uh, guys like you when i was uh, young like you so they will hire you and they will uh, they will do all the paperwork so you don't have to worry about it as long as the preparation is correct yeah anybody else guys uh, on ship uh, uh, what the guest have the facilities are same to the employees like for example like a fitness or like gym and the swimming pool or the, are they separate from there no the 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 crew the as as i say the staff is called the crew on board they have they call they are called the crew so the crew has uh, their own facilities they have everything in under they have everything for themselves uh, in in right now in all the modern ships you have all the facilities you have tv you have wifi you have gym you have you have your spas uh, spa days so you can the crew can go to the spa you have your own crew bar you have your own crew play area uh, you have your own everything is for yourself you have a own pool table you have a, a, all your area you have your own library you can have your own dvd library with people you can go and see your dvds um, so everything is there for crew you don't have to worry about it all the entertainment facilities are there right now all the companies have indian channels uh when we started there was no indian channels but i think 2010 uh, we got first indian channel yeah 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 and uh, right now um, i think all the ships have indian channels indian movies indian news channels i have got like four indian channels and uh, so uh, all the all the cricket uh, is live on tv all the football is live on tv so you get everything it's not a big difficult place you have your gym you can go to the gym if you get free time you can go to the crew bar sit down relax yourself you can play pool you can play ping pong there's other facilities as well there is a lot of other things happening in the crew we have uh, what do you call it uh, zumba nights and all these things happening so you can go and do whatever you want after your work so should the employees pay for it or it's uh, all free sir all free you don't have to pay for anything all the crew facilities are free you don't have to pay except your wifi in some companies not all the companies in some companies you have to pay but in some companies it's free so uh, but other other things are all free all free don't worry so which hotel is a better floating hotel or hotel in a land guys you have to make a decision for yourself okay 
uh, what do you want to do as a career? My 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 decision was to join the ship because I came from a very humble family. So for me, it was more important that I make sure I have a good earning to make sure I I have to make myself stronger and earn more. Um, because when I was working in India, it's my own experience. I can tell you, I left India. I joined uh, Cunard as assistant waiter. I was already assistant restaurant manager in Leroy Meridian. So from a managerial position, I went to assistant waiter position because I was not happy with what I was getting. So, uh, so I have to, you have to make decision. People who didn't go to ship with me, my friends, they're all now F and D managers and general managers. It's their choice. Good for them. They are happy, but I am happy what I did. So you have to make decision for yourself. Um, what you what you can do. If you want to be in land, you want to grow up in the land, and you want to become a general manager or a corporate manager, that's your choice. If you want to go to cruise ships um, and grow up there as well, um, it's your choice. It depends what suits you and what 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 vision you have in your mind. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Uh, so actually, I would like to say one thing. Uh, it's like, would you rather have the opportunity right now, even if to uh, join as an assistant cook? Yeah. So would you do that, or rather, uh, you can you know spend one or two years in a good uh, company, five star on land, and then join as a uh, third cook or a second cook? Guys, if you if you're joining a cruise company as assistant cook, I, I would say, I would say go. I, I would say go for it. I will not say no for it. Uh, but I would also add that. If you want to grow up from assistant cook to, let's say, chef de cuisine or sous chef, you need to increase your knowledge. Then what you have to do is, I would rather start working. But when I come home, I would I would um, self develop myself to to a position where I can take up the responsibility of uh, sous chef or chef de cuisine. Because if I will not have knowledge and experience, then I would probably be a failure when I go higher up. That's for sure. Uh, because uh, when you have experience uh, in working in in some place, uh, you know how to tackle different difficult situations and different situations. That's what it, you learn. Uh, but if you don't have experience and you go straight to work on a cruise ship, cruise ship is very monotonous, guys. It's like an assembly line, guys. It's like a assembly line to, uh, preparation. So that work is very different. And to learn difficult situation will not be there until you become very senior or you have a couple of years of experience. So in that way, you need to balance yourself up. You read well, you come back to India, um, you self-develop yourself, learn different cuisine. You don't waste time. People come back to India and they do nothing. They just uh, sleep and uh, uh, get fat. A uh, lot of the cruise people because it's okay. We will do two months. But you have to self-develop yourself, guys. So it's it's a very difficult. You are like asking. You're walking in two boats now. You need to prefer which boat you want to be in. Yes, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you. So, guys, thank you so much for being present and asking such wonderful questions uh, to Pramod sir. He has been so wonderful, uh, and he has given a lot of uh, you know. Uh, Vital information on the cruise liner, guys. I would love to see in the future one of uh, maybe all of you are joining this place because you know it's not that you can't do it. Nothing is impossible. Okay, just you have to have the will to go ahead and do it. Rajesh, I will say something before we close for the day. Thank you, uh, thank you, Pramoji, for uh, you no know, guiding all our students. Uh, appreciate everything. Thank you, uh, all the students, for being there. Okay, all the best. Uh, keep on. Uh, doing well. This is a difficult time. You, I know, but we will all come out of it. Uh, more importantly, uh, opportunities are there plentifully, but more it is for those people who have the capability. So, you have to come here. You have to learn more. Okay, we keep on getting people like uh, Pramoji as special guests. Uh, so, attend classes. Do well. All the best. Bye. Thank you, Pramoji, for coming. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, everybody. Thank you, Yadesh. Thank you, Yogesh. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Bye. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye bye. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank you, guys. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. Bye. Hey.